There's definitely something about the underdog story, isn't there? Two tiny little boxes that cost half the price of most high-end computers, yet since their launch, week after week, they held their ground, editing 4K footage, composing music, training AI models. Not bad at all for what Apple calls a mini. After months now of real-world usage, pushing both the M4 and the M4 Pro Mac Minis to their limits, today I'm finally sharing the full story. Not just benchmarks, but how they actually feel in day-to-day -day use. And yes, what I would do differently if I had to buy them all over again. This is my long-term review of the M4 Mac Minis. It's finally time for my long-term review of the M4 and the M4 Pro Mac Minis. While they haven't replaced my daily driver, which is still my M1 Max MacBook Pro, these little machines have seriously impressed me from day one and still impress me on a weekly basis as well. Today, I'll show you exactly how it's held up and also give you an update on whether or not I regret not upgrading the memory and storage on them and also where the base model might still make sense even today for you. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. Apple may not be right with their Apple intelligence efforts recently, or the iPhone, uh, the iPad, you know, there's a few things that they're not really doing right in my opinion, but when it comes to value for money on compute and the Mac mini, they really nailed it. I've been using this for video editing, testing blender renders, you know, heavy files in there, logic pro sessions as well. Not myself, but learning from the community here and wait for it. LLM work as well. Not just downloading a model and playing with it, but actually doing some advanced work, at least advanced for me. I'm still learning, very much a noob in this area, but I can perform fine tuning in fairly large language models with just a 24 gig of RAM on the M4 Pro model here, which is insane. To do something like that on such a tiny bit of compute, it, it, it boggles my mind. Compute these days is just becoming insane. And the Mac mini is another great example of that. When it comes to heavy lifting work and real world tasks as well, over the last few months, the M4 Pro Mac mini really has tackled everything from complex blender scenes to extensive uh, video edits, you know, like the one you're watching right now. It's not the most complex video, but there's layers and layers of 4K and you know, multiple effects that I'm adding in here. Honestly, like color grading and things as well the performance has actually exceeded my expectations in, in ways that I never expected. Editing multiple layers of 4K, 4K 60 FPS as well, you know, log footage, it handled it brilliantly. And of course, that's a cliche for, for us here on YouTube to talk about how great video editing is. Not everyone edit videos, right? Which is why I, I made sure to go through, I mean, I probably aged about 10 years. <laughs> the last three weeks, learning Python, learning Logic Pro. And you, my viewers, have really helped me here. You know, you sent me your projects, you, you gave me tips and things that I could actually use to learn and to implement and actually do real testing. So um, we went beyond video editing. And sure, when it comes to video editing, export times are a bit slower on the Mac Mini than in my beefed up M1 Max MacBook Pro, but editing itself, feels extremely smooth and lag-free. It's something that, yeah, still surprises me even today. All my third-party plugins work with it as well, the kind of 3D effects and things like that. And Logic Pro has probably been the most impressive things to do, especially when it comes to the M4 Pro chip, it has been very similar. Well, thanks to the community here, I learned enough to get a large project on, you know, going there and 300, I think I did like 250 to 300 tracks. That seemed to have been the limitation on the M4 Pro, on that cheaper version, you can get up to about 200 tracks, complex tracks with lots of third-party plugins in there as well. Honestly, it, it's insane. You know, you can really be productive, creative at a level that surpasses what the MIDI uh, should be doing. For music production in Logic Pro, I don't know, Logic Pro itself has this weird behavior in how he uh, uses the performance cores and the efficiency cores. But despite that weirdness, uh, to be able to work on such crazy projects is nothing short of amazing to me. And I know, you know, learning from you that there are projects that go way beyond what I'm trying here, but what I'm trying here wasn't uh, entry level, you know? So I think, yeah, it's definitely impressive for a lot of people, including, you know, real pros out there. And talking about optimization, spring is here. And it's that time of the year where you want to do some spring cleaning. And thanks to today's sponsors, Clean My Mac, that's exactly what we did with my Mac here. 
too much Mac clutter means creativity sometimes it can struggle to find a nice space, right? To be creative and productive. With Clean My Mac's all new smart care dashboard, you get a clear real-time view of your Mac's performance and health, not just a Mac mini, but any Mac. The My Clutter feature effortlessly clears duplicates and clean up removes system cache, development junk, and any unnecessary files that, you know, will basically free up space for your ideas and keep your Mac running nicely as well. You know what I really like about this as well is how clean the interface is and how friendly it is to, to use. Really nice, it's very Apple-like. In my Mac mini case, this is extremely important, especially for the base model options that I went for here, right? They don't have a lot of storage, so every space on our internal SSD needs to be kept, you know, for essentials only, not junk. And very much like the Mac mini, there's some really good value here because you also get Moonlock, which is an anti-malware engine, which means you can instantly remove threats, keeping your Mac not just clean, but very secure as well. And just like traditional spring cleaning at home, having a clutter-free Mac means you get into your mood for creativity and productivity much more easily. With Clean My Mac, you can reclaim not just your digital space, but your mental clarity as well. And here's some great news for you. You can try Clean My Mac free for seven days and use my code AlexGear for 20% off. Keep your Mac tidy and let your ideas breathe. And thanks so much, Clean My Mac, for sponsoring this video. Right, a quick note on the base model Mac Mini. This has been so good for us here in the studio that I actually ended up getting another one from my home. My wife loves it and it's been perfect to replace her old laptop. She had a HP laptop, which has been okay for emails and browsing, but it, it was the time to kind of, you know, get something a little bit better. For the price, it remains one of the best value Macs I've, not just Macs, but computers I've ever recommended. Another key insight that, you know, I can share in these three months is that, you know, it's still true that you don't want to spend more money than needed on internal storage upgrades. Using external SSDs through Thunderbolt 5 has been fantastic on the M4 Pro, much cheaper, faster in some cases, and more versatile as well, because you know, this is the Thunderbolt 5 from Acasis here. It's incredible. You know, they're more easily available now, and a few months ago, they were quite hard to find, but no need for tools. It's got a Thunderbolt 5 cable as well that comes with it, and you can open it by hand. I bet I can't right now. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, you can do it by hand. And I've got here a four terabyte, let me just show you, a four terabyte SSD, an M NVMe SSD here from Lexar. Honestly, that's all I need. And that's got pretty much my production work. Yeah, this is not just backup. This is, I can edit videos, photos, whatever from here really fast. More importantly, <laughs> I can share this with my MacBook Pro as well and have my projects here at home, doesn't matter where it is, traveling here on four terabytes in my pocket almost. And if you have the base model Mac mini, then Thunderbolt 5 is not gonna do much for you, but there's also same same company, they do similar things. Again, no tools required. This one here is a two terabyte, a different SSD, but similar sort of concept. You can add these by hand. Absolute lifesavers. Surprisingly, gaming on the Mac mini Pro has been a blast. Or the Mac mini, the base model as well. I actually tried uh, Cyberpunk 2077 via crossover. Shockingly, how playable it was. And Resident Evil 4 as well, which is a you know, more natively run. It, it works like a dream. Max aren't gaming rigs yet. Let's not pretend that you can you know, replace your gaming rig with this. But they're getting closer. They're getting, you know, casual gaming at least is now genuinely enjoyable on the Max. Is the M4 Pro worth it though? After months of extensive use, Here's the thing, if your workflow involves large projects, intense multitasking, and I'm not talking just 20 tabs on Chrome, no, I'm talking 50 or more tabs open whilst having two or three hefty apps in the background like Lightroom, Photoshop, you know, some creative apps that are you know, taking a lot of memory. For those creative, uh, heavy lifting, like vid video editing as well, and AI work or large scale audio production, the M4 Pro Mac Mini is absolutely worth the extra cost. I wouldn't recommend the base model for that. With the caveat that, you know, you gotta be careful because if you go with the M4 Pro and you start upgrading the RAM and storage on this, then you start entering Mac Studio price territory and I don't know, M2 Mac Studio, I mean. And I haven't tested this yet, but my gut feel is that for most applications, that, you know, most applications that are like creative apps, like 
video editing, um, photo editing, they, they rely a lot on memory and even LLM work. So, you know, an M2 Max Studio with say 64 gig of RAM, I still think that would be a much better purchase for that you know, have heavier uh, use case than any Mac mini with 24 or 32 gig of RAM. I could be wrong, but that's my gut feel. I wouldn't go crazy putting a lot of RAM and storage on these. I know some people are doing that and I'm sure that it will work fine, but I still think you get more cores, more kind of footprint in there for, for cooling as well on the studio. I might actually get the M2 Mac Studio just to test this theory, but anyway. If you're looking for a portable Mac mini setup as well, definitely check my video on that. I had a lot of fun actually taking this into the wild. So if you want to do like camping or just go off grid for a while, you could argue it's, is it practical or just plain fun? I certainly had fun creating that, but yeah, worth worth having a look at it. But whether or not it's useful, I'll leave that to you uh, to watch that video. As always, your feedback shapes these reviews. I'm so thankful to all your inputs on this. I mean, I, I'm actually, I owe you more videos on the Mac Mini because there's been so much engagement, so many people subscribe to the channel for these videos. So um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm still by myself here. You know, I've got very little help, but I genuinely appreciate your support and I will be doing more videos. This month alone, for example, over 6,000 people subscribe to this channel. This is a real nice boost for this channel and it doesn't go unnoticed. It's Saturday night and I've just, this is the third video I'm recording today. Your engagement is what keeps me inspired and keeps me going, even on a, on a time where I could be sat on the sofa playing, <laughs> playing my PlayStation. If there are other tests that you'd like to see or you know any questions that you have about the Mac Mini, drop them in the comments. I love engaging with you here. And uh, thank you so much. See you soon.